In this episode of the Computer Doctor Show, we're going to talk about four more things that can protect your identity, along with a very special guest and enjoying lunch at a local Wendy's. So stay tuned. and welcome to this edition of the Computer Doctor Show, formerly the Technology and Frustration Show. Uh, we also wanted to welcome you to our new format. Again, we're going to be mobile, we'll have guests, and we'll still bring, be bringing you the latest tech news and tech tips for life and business. This is episode four of our second season of Privacy, Security, and Protecting Your Identity Online and Off. I'm Aaron Moss, your host. Here are some tech news. Robot police dogs hit the streets with the Massachusetts State Police, uh, the Bomb Squad Division. The artificial canine comes from Boston Dynamics, the maker of Spot, which is a four-legged machine that can trot around like a dog. In September of 2019, the company began renting out the technology as a potential tool for law enforcement and other industries. But in order for it to be your friend, it gets complicated. And just a friendly reminder over the folks from Facebook that they are tracking your location even if you have the settings shut off within the app. Why do they do this? Well, that's how Facebook makes its money. It's the in the business of helping marketers reach exactly the sort of people that they want to advertise their products and services to. The social network can use your IP address, check-ins, and photos in which you are tagged to learn where you are. And the information that they use to target you with relevant ads and content in your news feed. So you can never claim that you never knew about this information because we've all checked that box to agree to their terms, even if you didn't read them. In this season of the Computer Doctor Show, part of our new format is we are now going to go to switch from our studio to an on-site segment where we talk about four more ways to protect your identity online and off with a special guest. Hello everyone, and this is the uh, Computer Doctor Show, and I'm actually here with my wife this time. Uh, She's been wanting to do this for a while now, and we're here at a local uh, Wendy's restaurant, and we just finished eating, and uh, we're gonna be going over four additional ways to protect your identity both online and off. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Okay, so this is actually way number 25. And that is to go low tech. So what do you think that means? Go low tech. Go low tech? Yeah. Something smaller. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it actually means doing something of a lower technology instead of the higher technology, especially when you're dealing with things that are of privacy. For example, if you have to send your credit card information and you can do it either over the phone or over the fax machine, which one is is the lower technology? Always the fax machine. Fax machine is actually lower technology. <clears throat> not that not necessarily that it's more secure, but it is less targeted. Most of the uh, breaches and hacks happen with the cutting edge technology. But if you go backwards and if you are only doing your low technology, okay, people are less adapt to actually you know, do something with that older technology. For example, just earlier today, I had to show a millennial how to fax something. <laughs> you know, they don't know how, but you know what? It's a lot of the millennials. They don't use them anymore. Exactly. So, uh, so one of the things that we have to uh, find different things in your life to go low tech. If you're worried about people's, uh, you know, hacking your pictures on on uh, online or something. Okay, go lower tech with the analog camera. Okay, get your film de- developed like in the olden days. I mean, it can be done, but it can't be hacked because it never hits online. <laughs> okay, it's less likely. So <clears throat> there's even, uh, uh, I even have a sales rep 
and you know Don Zavis, right? <laughs> so, of course. And uh, the way he teaches his classes, you know, he could use a nice um, board or on the on the uh, when when he gives his presentations, he could use like an electronic board, like a screen attached to a laptop. But he doesn't. He just has these two ginormous Whiteboard. pads, whiteboards. Yeah. Exactly. So it, you know, in cases like that. You know, it's easier to just do that than involve some sort of high tech into your space because sometimes it's better and honestly, sometimes it's not. So, it, whenever you can, go low tech. That's the po point of that. That moves us on to way number 26, and that is to create your own cipher. So, what is a cipher? It's a code. It's a code. And she knew that because we just talked about it just before the show. But I still knew it before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, you did know it. Yes, I'll give you that. So, uh, how would someone create a cipher or a code? Because here's the thing, you know, before, you know, this whole big threat about, you know, children being abducted and, uh, you know, uh, people being worried about their security back in the 80s when I was a kid. Okay, um, my mother established something very, very simple. She says, Aaron, if anybody ever picks you up from school and they said that it's from your mom, you ask them what the password is. Okay, and we had a password. We had a family password, and nobody knew the password but us. And if my mom had to send somebody to go pick me up for whatever reason, they would know, my mother would give them the password and I would know what the password is and they would have to recite me that password, okay? Um, <clears throat> it was a very early type of cipher. The cipher is just a code, okay? Uh, when you're writing numbers down, do you have some sort of representative cipher? I know when I'm, since I run a small business and I'm about to take a payment over the phone from somebody after this podcast, okay, I may have to write that phone number down. Do you have a cipher? Do you have a cipher to, so that in case you lose that piece of paper that you wrote that number on, you throw it in the trash, somebody can't run it through the trash and pick up that number and do something with that, with, with that sensitive information. So I think you know my cipher. Okay. <laughs> so so if, if I needed to secretly send you a number, I can do that to you because you know what my cipher is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And even if you forget what my cipher is, there's even a key to the cipher that's very, very easy to find. <laughs> and you know what that cipher is. Yeah. So um, some of the ciphers uh, that, some of the nice ones, you can get a lot of nice ciphers that like uh, online, uh, YouTube, Google. You just, just, just Google something about ciphers and just put a cipher into your life so that when you are dealing with sensitive information, you can put it into this cipher, into this code, okay? And uh, that goes for uh, uh, passwords, billing accounts, credit cards, uh, social security numbers, um, social security numbers of your family. Uh, one guy that I know, I don't advise that you do this, but uh, he had five kids and for, for insurance reasons, he would uh, always, uh, want to um, he, he, he would always need his his kids uh, social security numbers so in his phone he had his kids names and as phone numbers were the social security numbers but they looked like phone numbers in the phone so even if somebody got the phone they would say oh these are just people that he knows you know who cares you know mm -hmm. And the phone numbers, if you try to call them, obviously they, they may ring to somebody or it would be completely defunct or whatever. But he knew that those were actually the, uh, the social. social security numbers. right? So that could be a cipher to make, even to just space out numbers to make them look like a phone number. You can write down a, a credit card to make it look like a phone number, okay? But you know that that's not a phone number. You know that that is actually something else. So you can you can uh, you can interchange, <laughs> you know the uh, your cipher can be just to look like monotonous information or useless information. When in actuality, it's very very important. So, excellent, excellent, excellent point. Yeah, it is. 
That goes on, that takes us on to way number. Let me see if I can get my thing back up here. Way number 27, and that is to take different routes home. So, so let's say that you are a person that is always um, uh, taking the same route, okay? You, you go to work, you go to school, you, you, you carry out your whatever you do during the day. You leave your house the exact same time, you take the exact same turns, you stop at the same exact stop sign, you go to that same coffee shop, you go to that same gas station at the exact same time every day. That is a problem. Yeah, we never do that. Okay. We never do that because why? <laughs> I like something different every day, so that's just me. That's the quirky thing about me is I like to try a different way to, to get home, mm. see which way I can get home fastest or mm. just the scenic route. It depends. Yeah, so the, the reason why it's good to have to take a different route every day, okay, is because you can... Uh, if, if, if it's the same every day, then you start to become predictable. And once you start becoming predictable, that's when, uh, that's when people can start to target you. Okay, once you start getting targeted, okay, people, there's all kinds of things that, that can be done. Okay, people can, um, uh, people can say, oh, okay, so this lady or this guy always travels exactly at 8.05 every, every morning. Day. Okay, yeah. what I can do is I can steal his information. I can stage, I can stage uh, you know, an accident or I can stage that I've broken down. I can lift up the hood of my car. I can wave them down for assistance. I know that they're alone. I know they're gonna be here. I know, you know. So, uh, you know, these different things, that is how you can know that you are not being targeted. That's a if good you, point because, you know, women don't think of that unless they're freaked out that they don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so try to take different routes. It, it, it by itself, it doesn't save you anything, but it does help for you to become less of a target. Yeah. Okay. If people know and, and you have a very predictive index mm -hmm. of what you do every day, you become, you just by default, you become a target. It's okay. like me going to the mall, I'm always a target for those kiosks in the middle of the way, of the walkway. Yeah. <laughs> they always grab me. Okay, um, this brings us on to tip number 28, and that is to block your camera, your webcam camera with tape. Uh, that's actually a very, very old, uh, I'm gonna say a wise tale, but it is still valid today. Yeah, it is. Okay, there's all kinds of uh, hack uh, software that uh, people can use to turn on your uh, webcam when you're not authorizing it. Okay, the, the webcam can even be used, uh, some, some of these webcams, they have this little light that turns on when it's being active. But even if, there, but a lot of these hack programs they're programmed to not turn that light on, okay? So even though they are being, uh, even though they're, they look like they're not being turned on, there's actually that light that usually comes on, but even if that light is off, that, that still means that they can still actively look at you. That's scary. <laughs> so um, one thing you wanna do, uh, some of the new laptops, they have this like little door that you can just slide across and it really? blocks the lens. It's built into it. That's cool. Yeah. So if you're worried about security, you can make sure that you invest, if you're in a position where you're investing in a laptop, check for that, that little slide door where it blocks the camera. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that you need to be aware of, and this goes hand in hand with blocking the webcam, is the, the mic. All computers, phones, even the smart TVs where they have voice commands have mics, okay? Someone can go in and uh, hack that microphone and do live or record what's happening in your house. It's a big, big thing with privacy. The government does it, the Chinese do it, the Russians do it, okay? Two Americans, <laughs> okay? Okay, so that, that's, how they, that's how they get their that's intelligence. Scary. It is scary. I mean, you don't think of it. I mean, I have my computer on all day. Now I'm going to turn it off all day. <laughs> well, you don't have to go to the extent of turning it off, per se. So just putting uh, tape there. But 
Well, putting tape over a mic is not going to stop it. Well, I can turn off the mic. You can... Well, there's ways that... There's, a, there's, there's ways, ways that they can turn they it can back, turn on. back on. They Great. can, okay, so to turn the mic off, uh, well, the, the complete way to do it is to actually take the thing apart and unplug the mic, okay? And sometimes that might be uh, hard, uh, hard soldered into the motherboard or sometimes it's just an external device that you can just unplug on the inside, okay? Um, but another way is to uh, take it offline. If you're running on a, uh, if you're running hardwire, if you're not going to be uh, using the laptop for a while, take it offline. Okay, unplug your router. Okay, shut off your. Uh, uh, most laptops have a Wi-Fi switch, where you can just quick off. quickly uh, shut off the Wi-Fi. That's you why turn that Wi-Fi. On the computer, I'm yeah. On the well, it's easier to just leave it on all the day, yeah. you know. But and if you're not, if you, if you feel relatively confident that you're not that uh, that nothing terrible is going to happen, you don't have to go to the extent of actually shutting everything off all the time. Uh, but it's it's good to know. It's good to know that these are possibilities, and people are always wondering how you get hacked. That these all these little things, these 80 different ways, are the various different ways that people get hacked. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. This was uh, my wife has been actually begging me to do something like because I get other guests on the show and she's yeah. like, but what about me? What about me? <laughs> okay. Well, there we we're, there we have it, and there'll be more episodes. We'll probably get you in for another episode sometime soon, but thank you very much for the time. And that pretty much wraps it up for this episode of the Computer Doctor Show, which is sponsored by Computer Doctor of Tucson. We do amazing things over the phone with our tech support across the United States. Call our main phone number at 520-261-5508 or visit our website at computerdoctortucson.com. Computer Doctor of Tucson, because technology is great when it works. Please help us out and share this episode with friends, family, colleagues on social media. Email or direct them to our website at thecomputerdoctorshow.com. That's computerdoctorshow.com. Also send us a text at the 520-261-5508 or our social media sites on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, or any of uh, our comments and questions about the show. You can go ahead and send those to us. Until then, see you next time.